Hi folks, it's uh, Thinking Slow. Uh, we're doing a special episode today uh, because this is driven by an event basically. So it's, it's a bit of a news item and generally we don't do news, we only do analysis. Uh, but this is quite a big uh, piece of news. This is an, a letter that's been uh, sent to this uh, committee, JVCI, uh, on immunization uh, about the risks and um, benefits of uh, vaccinating children and, and the reason we can do this today uh, is a it's important and b we've already done quite a lot of work on this so I'm just going to reference back to that we're not going to go into a lot of statistics and details just going to show you what the letter is and most importantly who it's been signed by because this is very very significant in that the signatories are very serious heavy hitting scientists uh, co-signing with a number of uh, politicians, members of parliament in the UK. And, you know, this is now hopefully the beginning of an alliance uh, between sort of political forces and credible scientists to um, challenge some of the weirder, let's put it that way, uh, aspects of our COVID response and the vaccination of children uh, to me was the weirdest thing we've ever done basically so this would be a good place to start so here's the here's the letter then uh, here's the link we've made to the letter we're pretty sure this is the final version uh, we've spoken to one of the signatories today but we, we haven't been able to get them on to um, uh, to do an interview yet and the, you know, so it's still quite fresh basically but I think this is the right version of the letter and basically it covers things that we've been talking about and everyone has been talking about for a while that you know whatever immunity children get from uh, this vaccine um, it wanes quite quickly which we've already seen in the other work we've been doing on negative effectiveness against um, uh, COVID infection i.e. you're more likely to get COVID after a certain period of time um, the very, very low risk that we all know about for young people from COVID, thankfully, um, you know, if you're going to have a disease that's going to attack a section of the population, it's, it's, a, it's a mercy that it's not the young people. So, you know, that's a known fact for this disease. So the benefits uh, were already quite low. And what we know from Omicron is that the <coughs> infection fatality is even much lower still uh, than it was for Delta. So whatever benefit, whatever risk you were avoiding, it was already very, very small for young people. And it's become even smaller with Omicron. So that kind of completely, uh, to my mind, throws out any kind of realistic argument about benefits. And uh, myocarditis risks more data on, I'll show you one piece of data. Um, it is relatively high. And, and the important thing with this is, this is only one adverse reaction. So we're already talking based on one adverse reaction that that risk outweighs uh, any benefit you've got from reducing COVID risk. Now this is one of, you know, a very large number of adverse reactions. So even this one alone is enough to say this doesn't make sense. I think the real significance of this letter though is the uh, the stature and, and importance of the signatories. So you have a mix uh, of political uh, people with eight, uh, eight MPs signing this. Uh, you have eight professors, uh, mainly almost all with medical background. Not just medical background, but these are really serious experts in their field of child uh, immunization. Very, very big names. Um, and then five doctors, so medical and PhD, including Jerry Quinn, who's been on this show. So, you know, this, this is the importance of this. This is now, you know, more people breaking cover and basically questioning this part of the COVID response, which was, uh, to be honest, I think one of the least rational of them all. It never, to be honest, made any sense, I don't think, uh, at least to us. I mean, there's no black and white answers, but based on the papers we read, this never made sense. We'll just give you a couple of um, references to the work we've already done on this, basically. But again, the significance of this is this is now a sort of political movement with a highly qualified scientific movement. 
and this just cannot be dismissed as uh, you know fringe uh, fringe scientists and anti-vaxxers this is the statue stature of these people is far too serious to be blown off doubtless that's what they'll try but th this is not going away this is now i think uh quite a serious step basically um and just quickly on this issue we did all this in september again we're not epi epidemiologists we never pretended to be epidemiologists we're mathematicians by background uh personally i'm uh, theoretical physics focusing on quantum mechanics uh, before going into finance so you know it, w this is just a question of numbers and this is a, an important paper that we referenced in our video um, you'll see the video down below here somewhere this is the link if you need it otherwise this is called leave our kids alone and uh, you could see here that there's, there's a lot of um, description of the various scenarios but this is the multiple how much more likely it is for uh, a young teenage boy who's healthy without comorbidities to have a cardiac adverse event versus uh, COVID hospitalization. And of course, there's a bit of a moving target here, but you know, look, look at these numbers. You're between, it's between 22.9 and 4.3 times more likely for a young teenage boy to uh, suffer a ca cardiac adverse event than to be hospitalized from COVID. And for us, that was case closed, basically. You know, this never, never made sense. Now, the letter that's come out now is much more nuanced and perhaps it's uh, less um, confrontational uh, in that it says, you know, given the new date on Omicron and some other new statistics on myocarditis, maybe it's time to reconsider. You know, we can say things because we're not part of this medical... Um, world we can actually say it never made sense in September this should not have been done um, you know again that there's uh, uh, it's difficult to come up with black and white statements but if you believe this research then this was actually a black and white uh, situation um, and look at the look at the video it's there that's why we can do this today because we did the work on this four months ago um, just closing up then um, uh, just just to sort of emphasize that this is very much, I mean, firstly, it's a material risk and it's very much focused in a particular demographic, which is this uh, males uh, in the age group of 18 to 24 and also here in, in 12 to 17, you know, so this, this is a high risk, uh, you know, if this is a low risk in aggregate, when you actually start breaking it down, which uh, the people in Ontario have done, into uh, age brackets male and female and then which dosage you can see now this is getting pretty significant this is 0.2 percent basically it's going up slowly as well and that's not nothing you know versus the uh, risk from covid this this is not a immaterial number and um, you know this is this is uh, very much focused on this demographic I think for them, uh, as the other research paper showed, there's base, this is a this really doesn't make sense, and it's never made sense. I don't believe it's because of Omicron is is less uh, severe. It didn't make sense right from the get go. Basically, you know, this was supposed to be vaccinating the vulnerable. Uh, these people, thankfully, are not vulnerable, but they also are suffering material adverse events. And this never made sense. And actually, sort of just wrapping up on this, basically, you know, this is what happens when you get this top down kind of system. Someone somewhere makes a decision. Uh, and remarkably, there's actually um, some wording that, OK, maybe it doesn't make sense, but it, it, it's going to stop people disrupting their schooling. Now, these are very major value judgments now. I'm I'm a sort of libertarian by nature, but, you know, value judgments on, you know, are you valuing continuity of education above uh, COVID risk versus uh, adverse event risk from myocarditis? That's for people to decide with, with the very complex set of, of circumstances that everyone is faced with. Uh, you can't, I don't believe, begin to make value judgments like that top down and apply them to everybody regardless of their own circumstances. 
you know the job the job of government in all of this has always been to provide the data and allow people informed consent this is not what they're doing when someone like sir chris witty is saying well actually i think it's more important uh, that there's uh, we could have continuity of uh, education therefore i may even be creating health risks for those teenagers he has absolutely no moral legal right to make calls like that that's for the individual uh, and the individual's parents based on the circumstances that they're faced with so you know this is uh, this is why we make this channel because we are quite heavily into libertarianism okay not complete anarchy but uh, there's certain things that just cannot be decided top down like this these you know finely tuned value judgments of people to decide give us the data let's have your expertise and then we make the final decision on this and this brings me down to this uh, meme that's been circulating around uh, in twitter in various shapes and forms and you know this is really true basically look at where we are you know the government is using coercion uh, it is using propaganda as you all know a lot of our videos have been about exposing untruths and lies that have been uh, propagated by the government you know almost by definition uh, the people doing this stuff are not the good guys if you look back through history and uh, just closing up one of our most informative for me at least the most interesting talk we had was with Reverend Franklin you know about lying and the motivation of people so if you haven't seen that one you know do have a look at it because some of the material we do is in, in many ways too early uh, it goes out and people are not really used to it so uh, for example, on this issue now, I think uh, it'd be good to circle back to that September analysis we did on my myocarditis in, in the teenagers because this is now a live issue and people may be more interested in it and will sort of re refer back to that analysis. So that's it for today, basically. Um, um, we'll provide the sources. These are most of the links, basically, of what you've seen here. If you want to do a screen grab of this and, and uh, have a look yourselves, um, you know, as we say at the end of every uh, episode, um, don't stay uh, safe, stay free, because without freedom, you don't have safety. And, um, and we'll do more work on this during the coming week. Okay, thanks. Bye.